Hello. 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 Um, yes, we, we have our wonderful returning uh, Katie Conf speaker, Kay Andrews. Um, seeing the big picture using open source images, which looks really pretty and big. It, cause, and it's the big picture. Now, I'm going to talk to you today about finding and using open source images for whatever you want to use them for, whether it be blog entries or splash screens on your apps or presentations, whatever. So why do I care about this? Well, apart from being a business analyst with MYOB, I also have my own photography business and have been a photographer for many years. Um, and as with any other photographer who puts their work online, I've had my images stolen over and over and over again. I've seen my images on the covers of books. Uh, in, I even saw one in a real estate agent window as I was going past on a bus in a big light box. Um, and on countless blogs. Uh, plenty of blogs who asked, but plenty who didn't. Uh, in fact, my daughter was having a chat with her boyfriend a couple of weeks ago and showing him uh, my old Flickr photos of her as a kid. And he went, whoa, I've seen that photo before. And sure enough, found her picture in a YouTube video with a channel that's got over a million uh, subscribers, but had never asked me if they could use it. But my most stolen image is one I like to call Evil Baby. <laughs> Now, she, she wasn't evil, although she's 13 now, so she actually is. But at this time, she was not even one, and she was just showing us a trick that her father had taught her, to pull a Satan face on command. Now, I put that on Flickr with an all rights reserved notice, but pretty quickly people started borrowing it, stealing it, putting it all over the place. It's cropped up in memes, And if I do a reverse image search on this one at all dimensions, I get hundreds of them. Now, at first, I started trying to email people and saying, hey, I own that. Can you take it down? Or I'm happy to sell it to you for a fee or blah. Um, but when there's hundreds and hundreds out there, it becomes a bit difficult to do that. Some people um, have tweaked the color balance. Some people have cropped it. Someone even entered a baby photo competition with it, claiming it was their own baby. Uh, but none of them ever asked me if they could use it. The, the most troublesome uses for me are ones where people post it and say, look at this ugly baby. This is the daughter of a friend of mine. And luckily, her parents don't really use the internet because I'd hate for them to stumble across her face. So um, a couple of caveats. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm speaking from personal experience and using the research I've done into this for my own use. And the stuff I'm going to talk to you about today is based on Australian law, not on American law. Some of this will be familiar to you, uh, especially the stuff about Creative Commons licenses, because it's the same kind of licensing you use for your code. Um, but hopefully, some of it's new to you today. So why is it so hard to use images correctly? Why is it so hard to find open source images and use them correctly? Well, once someone takes a copy and it gets copied again and again and again, that ownership gets diluted and it gets harder and harder to find out who created the image in the first place. And reblogging tools like Pinterest or Tumblr make it easy for people to copy and reshare and dilute that ownership further. So let's look at what copyright is. So copyright is a legal right that gives the creator of an image exclusive rights for its use and distribution. That is, they can choose where it's used and how it's used, and also if and how much they get paid to use it. Now, copyright is completely automatic. As soon as you take a photo on your phone, you own copyright of that image. When you share it online, that doesn't change. 
You don't need to apply for copyright in any way. You don't need to claim it in any way. If an, you don't need to put a copyright symbol on it. You don't need to put a watermark on it. Every image that you create or that anyone else creates automatically has copyright. So just because you find an image online somewhere and it doesn't say who took it, it doesn't say uh, where they took it or, or what their name is or, or any kind of watermark, it doesn't mean it doesn't have a copyright and it certainly doesn't mean it's not licence free. Now the only way that copyright stops is 70 years after the creator dies in Australia. Um, or if, you, if the creator sells that copyright to somebody else. So that can either be a, a, transfer, uh, a transfer for money or a transfer that's through some other kind of contract. So a lot of competitions online, if you have to submit a photo for the competition, the fine print will say that you're actually handing over your copyright to that image. So what isn't copyright? Well, for starters, copyright isn't a bad thing. It lets people get paid for the work that they do. And it certainly isn't a requirement to attribute. That's part of the license. So copyright is completely separate from the license on an image. So something that has a completely open source license, like Creative Commons Zero, is still under copyright. Now copyright is not the same as the legal concept of moral right. So even if I sell my copyright of Evil Baby to somebody else, I still have the moral right as the creator of that image. So nobody, the person who buys that copyright can't pretend to be the photographer. They can't pretend that it's their baby and submit it to a competition. Uh, and they can't do anything with that image that tarnishes my reputation. So even if I've sold my copyright, I still have moral right to the image. So that's copyright. What's licensing? Licensing is how the creator of the image exercises that control. That's how they control how and where the image is used. Now, it's, it's a bit difficult to fully explain all variations of licensing here because it's entirely up to the person who owns the image. You can, as a creator of an image, write your own license with every kind of tiny little nitty gritty detail you want. But there's a couple of frameworks that are out there that you might be familiar with. Royalty free licensing gives you the right to use a photo across different media for different purposes. Rights managed licensing is for a specific use only. So one time on one media. But the one that you're uh, probably most familiar with is Creative Commons. Now, it's not one size fits all. As you know, there's six different levels of Creative Commons with various combinations of commercial, non-commercial, whether um, attribution is required or not, whether you can do derivatives. It works the same way with images as it does for software, whether you're allowed to modify it, tweak it in any way, and also whether you're required to share alike. Then fair dealing comes into it. Now you might have heard of fair use, that's an American concept. In Australia it's called fair dealing and it's really quite different. So there are only four things that are covered under Australia by fair dealing that give you the right to use an image without finding out what the license is and complying with it. They are research and study, criticism and review, parody and satire and reporting the news. There's also some stuff in there about um, extracts and quotes, but that's more relevant to text than to images. So basically, non-commercial use in Australia is not enough to claim fair dealing. That includes presentations, that includes social media. If it doesn't fall into those four categories, then you can't use fair dealing as an excuse to not comply with the license for an image. Now this isn't the same as fair use in the US as I said, because it's a much more open-ended concept. Uh, but even in the US, the, the precedents that are out there legally for using images on social media, 
is still a bit inconclusive. So um, it's, uh, it's even that's not clearly defined in the US, but certainly in Australia, fair dealing only covers those four. So you've got an image. You've found this awesome photo you want to use in your um, presentation or your blog entry. First things first, you've got to find who created it. Now, that's not enough because you can track down the photographer and then you go, great, I'm just going to put an attribution underneath it and I'm covered. As I said, copyright isn't just a requirement to attribute. And in a way, just stopping there and putting the, the creator's name on it is worse because you're saying, hey, I found who created this image and I don't care whether they agree with me using it here or not. So the next thing you have to do is check the license. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. You probably know how to do a Google reverse image search. Here's an image that a mate posted on Facebook. And because I was browsing in Chrome, I can right click and search Google for this image. And that takes me here. Now, Google for some reason takes a guess at what text you might be searching for related to that image. For some reason, these women in a dust storm in India, uh, it's decided that's got something to do with the opera of Wren. I have no idea why. So make sure to change that text to something else. If I'm looking for the creator of an image, I'll put photographer in there. That's normally most effective. But you might have to tweak a few times to get it right. So with the word photographer in there, my top five results are here. Four of them are Pinterest. That just reinforces what I was saying before about it watering down the ownership. But the um, second one is National Geographic, which is normally pretty spot on about using images. So I go there and find out who the photographer was. Great, I can go back to Google image search and put his name in instead of just the word photographer. And then I find his website and his image licensing. Now it turns out Steve um, is a career photographer. It's how he pays his bills. It's how he feeds his family. So if I want to use this image, I'm going to have to pay for it. Now, it's always worth asking. If you're using it for non-commercial or not-for-profit, it's always worth asking and saying, hey, this is what I'm using it for, is that okay? And you can get a one-use license for that. But in this case, it's probably a better idea to think outside the box and go and find an open source image that uh, is just as useful for you. Another way to do it is with a tin eye search, which is very similar to the Google image search except it gives you the ability to, to sort your results by the, um, the date they were first found online. So if it's, as particularly if it's an image that was created post-internet era, that can be really useful for finding what you're after. So if I've got my image and I found out, ugh, I'm going to have to pay for it, or if you want to start from scratch, and you want to find an image from the get-go, first thing to do is do a Creative Commons search. Now, the Creative Commons people have a search on their website, search.creativecommons.org. It lets you search for keywords, images across a bunch of different sites, and it also lets you uh, indicate what kind of license you want, whether it's commercial or whether you want to do a derivative of the image. The next option, and the easiest option by far, is to use an open source image library. There are a few out there. You've probably got your favorite yourself. Um, there's pexels.com, gratisography.com. There are a lot of ones with really crappy images on there, but um, there's some excellent ones. Be wary of unscrupulous sites. There's quite a few wallpaper image sites out there that scrape content off Flickr and other sites and repost it, claiming that it's license free where it's not. My favorite is unsplash.com. Unsplash is uh, every image on this website is Creative Commons Zero. There's absolutely no restriction on how you use it. You can use them all for commercial use and there is no attribution required. 
Now, it's driven by photographers. So the quality of the images is very high because a lot of them use it as a business card site. So they'll put a constant trickle of quality images that will hint at the projects they're working on and they're all available for you to use completely free, but then there's a link to their um, professional site. It's also very well tagged, so finding images is easy, and there are curated collections. So if you're searching for an image with a keyword, it's worth clicking through to the collections and seeing what other people have gathered together because there's some really good stuff if you think outside the box about what image you want to use. So in summary, as Evil Baby says, don't be a jerk. Best practice is to use an image that is appropriately licensed and then actually comply with that license. Now, if complying does require attribution, there's no one size fits all rule. I can't give you a guide to, um, that will cover all cases as to what to put in your HTML or what to display on screen because, as I said, there's as many licenses um, as there are creators. But if you do find an image that's under Creative Commons requiring attribution and it's not clear what that attribution needs to look like, the best practice is to do exactly what Oren did and display the title of the image, the name of the image, and a link to the source. Not to hide it in the HTML, but to actually display it on the screen. Thank you. You can find me there on Twitter. Thanks for having me, WootConf. Can I have a cookie now? You have to answer possibly a few oh. questions. Has anyone got a question and will be okay to phrase it in the form of a question? I'm just going to ask because I don't know anything about Australia. Um, it, it, did you say that the copyright expires after 70 years from death? Yes. But that doesn't apply if you sell it? Does it go forever if you sell it? It depends on the terms of the sale, unfortunately. Oh, wow, you can't do that in New Zealand. So, okay, that's really interesting. Mm. How much is modifying? Is cropping something modifying? Is resizing yes. it and changing the yes. resolution? Okay. Yes, Thank that you. counts. Any other questions? Yes. So, as a photographer, if I wish to, you know, provide open source images, uh, what license is generally accepted as the best? Because there's like Creative Commons um, and the various levels of those, which is like a good place to start. That's a very, it's, it's a personal decision. Um, most of my images are online as all rights reserved because I've just been burnt too many times. Um, but I certainly started out by making uh, my images available under um, share-alike attribution required no derivatives because um, I didn't want people screwing around with them. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a very personal decision. And I, I know a few photographers who are using Unsplash and the way that they have, um, the way that they deal with that themselves is to say, I'm locking down all my images, you need to pay me to use them, but I'll have a constant trickle of quality ones that you can use for free. One last question. Uh, so you say you, you're not chasing down uh, lawyers for everybody who's taken stock no, of it's angry it's baby. No, it's exhausting. And okay, so it's, that's the question. Is it, uh, is, is it purely just it's, it's too much effort, it's too much money to engage lawyers? Is there a point at which it is actually worthwhile going after people? Said only because I know there's a couple of examples in Perth where the West Australian has taken photos off Facebook. So when is that line? When, when, when is it worthwhile and what do you do when you do need to? Well, um, the, the Arts Law Centre, um, and I think there's one in each state, has some great information about how you can uh, approach people yourself uh, because lawyers are prohibitively expensive in many, uh, in many cases, if not most. Um, so there, there are ways you can do it, but it, certainly personally, I have to make a call about how upset I am about it, which comes down to a couple of factors. One is, are they making money off it themselves? Um, and two is, is it, is it something that I disagree with? 
so I still do, if I, find, um, if I find an image being used in a way that is offensive to me, um, uh, evil baby pops up sometimes in some quite misogynistic contexts, then I will try, but it's really hard. And on that wonderful poison note, let's thank Yay. you again. <laughs>